uh, hey guys, how's Thursday? Hey Scott, thank you, buddy. It was all right. Uh, Jamie, how are you, my friend? Greetings, Andy and Scott, and everyone in attendance. Um, I'm good over here, Andy. It was right. an interesting day in El Market. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'll be uh, diving into that here in just a minute. First of all, I want to thank. We got. Uh, geez, it looks like it's going to be a record breaking crowd in here today and good because I got some really good stuff to share with you today and uh, I think you're going to all be excited uh, for those who have the trade ideas you're going to be uh, excited and for those that don't you're going to see some really cool stuff and hopefully uh, you'll be joining soon at least for the test drive and you can check out uh, a lot of the stuff I'm going to share with you today so let's get started but before we do Let's dive into our disclaimer here. Okay, this is uh, for educational purposes only. Okay, we're not trying to get you to invest in anything. That's not our job. Uh, we're here providing content for you. And uh, if you are seeking investment advice, a, an advisor, somebody who can pass along that information to you legally. All right. Uh, before we move on, I know we have a lot of people in here uh, that are by traders with many 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 years of experience okay not traders who only traded it for unsuccessfully for two years and then came to work no no we have tons of uh years of trading uh, successful trading so uh, we're here to help you and we do that by bringing you these webinars monday through thursday every day at five eastern time uh it's usually myself jamie or steve kind of juggling paired up in twos uh but on Wednesdays, we have our Q&A demo, and that's with our CEO, Dan Merkin, and our CTO, Brad Williams. It's always a great place to stop in for Q&A and to see upcoming features. Uh, and let's not forget the traders room. Okay, Barry, once again, another longtime trader, very good moderator and trader, and that is free for everyone. Okay, uh, so get in there, especially if you're in the test drive. Uh, but before you do, make sure you come to the support webinars okay i know you're excited you got this new software you want to jump in there and start trading but it is very intuitive but at the same time it, you know you got to put some time and effort into it and we're here to help you do that and uh, we're going to be providing support webinars uh pay no attention to this time i think they're going to jamie i'm not sure if you know uh scott will probably go over this uh on our on our way out here but uh, i'm not sure if this is going to be the schedule for our uh, uh support webinars i i think they're going to be a little bit longer and start earlier uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not... we're definitely okay. changing up the 5 p.m eastern slot oh, yeah i know the, that i was talking information so don't fret <laughs> all right uh you're also going to see something in there called that is our simulated for anything uh but you will be able to paper trade off our brokerage plus module it's a really cool interface uh i'll show a little bit of that today uh and it's a great way to test your strategies i look in the back office that we have and i see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people using this and they're they're sitting there you know calculating their pnl and and you know what it's 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 very smart i mean you, you don't want to just dive in head first okay if you're if you're new to trading okay you want to take some time you want to learn what trading is all about and there's no better way than do some paper trading getting our get in our uh, traders room and, and spend a few months you know learning and testing your skills so we'll have more about that later but uh, i want to move on here and talk about our agenda for today all right we have the market recap like we always do uh and then the holly recap jamie will take it over for a few minutes there and discuss some of the holly trades with us uh, and then uh, I'm going to go over. I, I got a Mia couple to, to do, deal with uh, last week. Uh, the buy buttons on the charts. Well, they had switched up the configuration in the back, and I wasn't aware of it. So I am going to show you real quick. Uh, we weren't getting the stops to come out correctly. So I'll just rehash this real quick and show you what you need to do uh, to make the stops right. But anyway, if you weren't here last week, you may be a little fuzzy on this uh, portion of the uh, webinar. And then we have a channel called Channel 4 that I just redid today, okay? And we are it's going to be changed to uh, Trader's Vault, the Trader's Vault, okay? That's going to be the name of it. Nope, not sure if we'll have it to you. Hopefully, we'll have it to you by the time that 
uh, next Monday rolls around. But if not, it'll be called Trader uh, Channel 4. But the format and everything is, is already done. I did it. It's just a matter of fact, if you're using Trade Ideas now, you can go in there and look. But you may have to log off and log back on to get that to uh, reconnect to the new channel. Uh, it's new and improved. There's some great alerts in there and scans. We're gonna be, I'm going to be going over all of them today. Okay, uh, and guys, I would really pay attention to this portion of our webinar. These are some of the favorite uh, alerts and scans that we use to profit in the marketplace. Uh, you're going to have access to them just by simply opening up the software. Okay, you don't need to flag us down and, and ask us to share it. it. You have immediate access to this, uh, and there's some good stuff in there. So we're going to be going over that, and uh, I would actually, you know, get a pen and paper out because I'm going to highlight uh, the new ones and I'm going to highlight uh, our favorite ones. All right, let me back out of this and let's pull up, talk a little bit about the market today. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because we really didn't go anywhere. Up. I mean, as far as the overall chart goes, zero in a little bit. I mean, I'm you know, excited. You know, we're basically the same pin going here. You can see these levels over here is kind of matching up. Also, if I go to uh my little horizontal line here and draw it right here i think you'll see as well okay it's called a pivot line i'm okay, gonna go gap one bouncing all around this thing uh the other day right here so we've kind of been holding this 20 uh period for a while they move an average and also yeah things could get quickly down to the 50 and then really a, a break below that and you can deal in with this this and the 50. then things could go down fast and furious but we're not there yet we're quite a bit above that area so let's see what happened i'm like i said i'm not gonna uh preach too much about this market because we're kind of uh the same place we were probably the last three webinars where we talked about the overall market recap so let me uh just real quickly go over the cues now obviously to the upside you're looking at this high right here we get above this high and we could skate higher maybe to this 200 day moving average also have a gap fill right here uh, that we might want to close. All right, real quickly on the cues, gonna show more strength than that just because of the heavy weighting uh, of Amazon, Apple, Google, Netflix, uh, make up 45, 50% of the uh, the weighting in the cues. So that's, I really don't like uh, looking at that one as much as I do the, uh, the SPY, but it can help lift the market, that's for sure. Diamonds, a uh, little bit different, but once again, this is, uh, you know, only 30 stocks, but below the 10 period moving average, but basically looks very much like the uh, spies. IWM, pretty much the same looking uh, as the spies and the, uh, and the diamonds. So Jamie, you got anything you want to add there? There's not a whole lot to talk about today. We're just kind of a, kind of in a sit and wait mode right now. You got that right, and uh, you know the volume levels on all those major tracking ETFs were below normal, with the exception of uh, mm -hmm. you know the bonds. <laughs> um, bonds were up again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, interesting moving forward. If we get that gap fill, that that would def definitely be a good sign for the bulls. Um, or we could just have a little bit of sideways action. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, see what cards are played tomorrow. Sure. All right. Uh, well, uh, you want to take a take it over right here and just uh, just hit on a uh, a few of the. Uh, uh, that on the, on the trades. Sure. Let me go ahead and grab the screen here. And I do believe you should be seeing my. Uh, desktop. I got it. Okay. Perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, big crowd in here, Andy. Big crowd. So um, we're going to talk about Holly, the AI or the three AI modules that you can see over here on the channel bar here. And since we do have a, an enormous amount of new people in here, we'll take a brief moment here to kind of uh, go over the different uh, risk modes that the AI has access to. The first one being conservative mode. Then we have moderate risk mode. 
And then you can see this column right here is aggressive risk mode. And if you glance over here at the toolbar again, you can see that each AI, uh, no matter how many trades it spit out today, finished in aggressive mode. That was the mode that was the most profitable today. But of course, with the, the most aggressive risk mode comes the most aggressive risk as well. Um, so real quick here before we begin, a little bit about the numbers that you see over here versus the numbers that you're going to see on my desktop. Um, we can see the totals over here. Holly 1.0 finishing up $114 on two trades, uh, 2.055 on five trades. And rounding it out here, NEO finishing up $231 on six trades. So these values that you're seeing in the channel bar over here are based on each and every trade being traded with 100 shares, okay? Now the values that you're gonna see in my uh, AI trades plotter here are based on risk. So if I pull my TI toolbar over here and we click on tools and options and we go to AI trade size, you can see we could size it for 100 shares per trade or a certain amount of dollars, but I'm simply saying, you know what? No matter what the trade is, I only want to risk 100 bucks. If I'm wrong and it gets stopped out, I only want to lose right about 100 bucks. So based on that stop value, the system will calculate the appropriate amount of shares that you can see in this column here. So a lot of people get confused going, well, your numbers here look different up here. And if we add all these together, we're not going to get these totals. So that is why. So hopefully in the not too distant future, based on what we input into the AI risk mode, these channel bars or the channels over here will also start reflecting that data. We're just not there yet because that's the way we set it up originally, but it is coming. Okay, now having said that, conservative mode. What's going on in conservative mode? And basically that's just the AI obeying its entire rule set as far as risk management goes, like you or I or any sane trader would do. We got a profit target sometimes, we got a stop loss. And with the AI trades, we have a time to hold. If you direct your attention down here to the AI strategy panel, we can see each and every strategy that made the cut today, how many trades were issued from that strategy. And then we can see the time to hold that that strategy is geared for. Uh, in this time stop column here. Some are 60, 120, some are until 10 minutes before the close, but you can always get those values by going to the time stop uh, in the AI strategies panel. So back to conservative mode, uh, stop loss, profit target, or timed hold. And then there are two audibles that the AI can call to get out of a losing trade or a winning trade early. And those come in the form over here in conservative exit reason, they come in the form of profit save and reduced risk. So we had one reduced risk, a few profit saves today as well. So all in all, five reasons why the AI will exit a trade in conservative risk mode. Now the difference between conservative and moderate, all we're paying attention to in moderate is a stop loss. If a stop gets hit, boom, the show is over. Uh, the value is frozen moving forward at that stop level. Uh, you can see here we had one, two, three, four stop outs today. And once that happens, this value does not change. Now, aggressive is simply not using any risk parameters whatsoever, just putting the trade on, letting the chips fall where they may. Um, so you can see we had some nice aggressive profits here, uh, letting them run or even after a stop out. But of course, some of the ones down here got a little bit worse after the stop out. OK, um, but all in all, <clears throat> this this column here would be nice and green, even with the larger than normal stop outs that we're seeing down here. Um, so th those are the three risk modes that the AI uh, will track each and every day. And typically what we do is we sort by moderate profit here and we talk about things like this pizza. Notice in conservative profit mode, we had a flat. What was the exit reason? profit save over here. AI basically, for lack of a better term, got bored. If we check out the intraday up here, uh, we got the entry signal right here at 79.66. Blue box over here corresponds with that entry price generated by the AI. We got the stop loss level down here, and we have up here when the AI got out in aggressive mode. Now, the shaded area is conservative profit mode. So basically what happened is we got the buy up here, and then the thing just meandered sideways for a good amount of time there, about an hour and a half. And when that occurs and the trade stops going in the direction that it's that it's supposed to, you know, up for a long, down for a short, then the AI 
is likely to kick in the profit save or reduce risk. So, you know, makes me think of me sometimes, been there and done this a million times. You're like, yeah, it's not working. I'm going to go ahead and flat it. That way I won't lose money. Only to have it at the end of the day do what you hope it was going to do earlier in the day and would have turned into a profitable trade. So a lot of the times when we see the AI making an exit in profit save or reduce risk, if we're not already in it, sometimes that can act as a great entry signal. And in this case, it would have been, okay? We could have bought it here initially, but all this meandering around the entry line, when it got to this level right here, we see the AI making that exit for a flat, could have easily went, hmm, you know, it's just doing a little consolidation dance here. Um, matter of fact, I think it's a good entry signal here. And of course, it would have continued to do that for the rest of the day. So to make it a little bit easier to understand, let's pretend for a moment we were in 100 shares of the original signal. We see the AI flatting the trade and we're thinking to ourselves, well, should I get out? What if this thing ends up moving higher? I remember what Jamie was saying in the webinar. So a good methodology is to engage in a little bit of both, okay, until you get used to the system and say, you know what, I'm going to take half off right here with the AI, but I tell you what, I'm going to keep the other half. I'm going to stick to my original stop level, right, reasonable risk management. Um, so you would have flatted the first lot, but if you would have stuck to your original stop on the second lot, you would have profited on the second lot. So whether you got all of this or maybe you only ended up making 80 bucks on a half lot here or, you know, a uh, $100 risk, that would have been better than flatting the trade. Now, as you can see here, these two guys, I mean, we've got EVRI here, difference between 62 bucks and 82 bucks, you know, an extra 20 bucks, nothing to write home about. Um, NTRA, another noticeable spread here. But you know, due to where we are in the market, and I'll just pull the SPY back up here, anytime we start approaching these uh, these key pivot levels where, well, we might break up, we might go down, or we might meander sideways, um, trade management gets a little bit more difficult. It's never easy, uh, but when we get up to these levels in the market, <clears throat> the uh, difficulty goes up a notch. So we did have a nice little spread here between conservative profit and moderate profit on this NTRA. Pretty early entry signal here about five minutes into the open and we get a nice little lift. And then guess what? We get a little sideways action. A lot of stocks were doing this today. AI takes its profits, 183 bucks on a hundred dollar risk. Eh, not too shabby. So we could have uh, engaged in a little bit of the 50-50 methodology as well. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna get out of half with the AI. I'm gonna keep the other half sticking to our hard stop. Of course, it would have given us a little, uh, little concern here as it put in this 15 minute doji type candle. Um, but notice what it did. Came all the way back, came all the way down through that 10 period SMA, which is the green line that you see right here, and then closed back above it. So that's a sign of strength. That doji is telling us the sellers tried to take it down, but they couldn't maintain control, whip it right back up, candle closes pretty much where it opened. And then reclaims that 10 period, meanders sideways for a little bit longer to get that nice push into the close. All right, so a nice spread between 183 and 348 there. Uh, great example of extracting a little bit of this spread between conservative and moderate profit. So two of those great examples today. Um, now I'm gonna sort by aggressive profit because we do have a couple that, that were interesting trade arounds today, okay? And more times than not, when a stop is hit, uh, that's where a nice trade around might materialize. And in this case, we had a couple of those today in TWOU as well as Zixi. Now, I always like to use the analogy back when Andy and Steve and I used to go to, uh, to had to go to a trading office back in the mid to late 90s to get the technology that we needed and trade with the SO system, blah, blah, blah. And there would always be somebody in there that we'd, you know, the, the office was typically packed. You'd have your little clicks that you hung out with, but you'd, you'd hear some guy talking about about to get stopped out of this one, not too happy, and we'd kind of look at each other and pull the chart up and go, oh, well, now it looks good. <clears throat> I'm going to buy it where that guy got stopped out, and sure enough, a lot of the times it would turn out to be a good trade. You were taking advantage of that guy's information, okay? Not to say you were taking advantage of the person, but you were just absorbing the information and going, hey, he was just a little early. And uh, if I can get it right here, that's a good trade. And we apply the same mentality when we see the AI getting stopped out, 
Okay, so notice the stop hit here as soon as the uh, same candle, pretty much. Buy it up here, 27.83, and then whoosh, we get a stop, uh, stop out. Um, happens. But then notice what it does right around the stop area. A lot of times these stop areas act as pivots. Now you're going to hear a lot of people talk about eh, it's the algo hunters, it's the stop hunters, which those are real things, okay? Um, the big banks, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, City Group, Wells Fargo, they're not dummies, okay? Matter of fact, they're pumping millions and millions of dollars into their algorithms that they use to quote unquote make markets. And, you know, they know where these stop areas are. So there are stop hunting algos. So it would only make sense that we pay attention to them in a little bit different capacity sometimes, especially in this day and age with the highly, you know, automated markets out there and algorithms all over the place doing different types of things, whether it's the banks or individuals or uh, anybody running automated trading systems. So what happens here? We get right down to the stop area. We go sideways around it for about 45 minutes. And look at these interesting wicks that are put in over that 45 minute period. All right, wick, next 15 minutes, try to go lower. Nope, wick back up to that area. Third 15 minute candle, go down. Nope, wick back up. So if you were, if this stock was brought to your attention on a stop out, or you might even have been in it, and once you see this type of activity occurring around that stop area, that's a great buy signal right there, especially these three wicks right here. So we could have easily used the bottom of these guys as our stop loss and said, okay, I'm going to take a stab at it somewhere in this area right here, use down there as our stop loss. And then boom, we do get capitulation finally, and we get the trade going in the direction that it was originally intended to, to go. Um, reclaim the fast line up here, and then it was off to the races. Um, so just keep in mind as you move forward, not just the original entry signals can be valuable, but also stop outs, reduce risk and profit saves can also be very interesting entry signals as well. We had the same thing with ZIXI here. Buy signal here, sideways for a little bit, wham. And once again, very similar to what we just saw in TWU. Comes down to that, that stop area, hovers around it for a good 45 minutes, then we get a lift above it, and then boom, not only does it make it back to the original entry line, but boom, starts to stick into that 10 period again and finishes much higher uh, going into the close. So, you know, a lot of people out there, especially when they're new to the system and watching Holly for the first time, think that the only value is getting in that original signal and, you know, that's it, but that's not the case. What you have to keep in mind is what we have here is a machine that's bringing us statistically weighted entries now, just because statistical weight is on our side does not necessarily guarantee profits or success on each and every trade because sometimes it's a little bit off on the timing, but the statistical probability is good for the entire session. So just keep that in mind as you move forward. Not only are the original entry signals something to pay attention to, but also the exits as well and for entry purposes on top of the original entry signals. Um, so Andy, hopefully that made sense to everybody. Uh, anything you'd like to add on top no, of what I just spoke no, about? No, you, cover, you covered it very well, Jamie. Yeah, right. you sure so, did. You know, just keep in mind, we got 11, 13 signals here today. So, you know, not overwhelming, not too much, not too little, just kind of the right amount of trades. So just keep that in mm -hmm. mind. Every one of these signals has statistical weight by it. Sometimes the timing is going to be right on the money. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit of time for that trade to get going, but pay attention to those stop levels. Um, you know, I even heard Dave Mabe uh, talking about this on Twitter the other day. You know, um, you know, don't get upset about something getting stopped out, but start paying attention to these stop areas because they can be very valuable moving forward in your trading routine when a lot of people don't think mm -hmm. about stop areas in that capacity. So that's Absolutely, about it, Jamie. Andy. I will kick it back over to All you right. now. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right. Let's. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to talk about. Uh, let's. I'm going to bring up a stock that I'm currently in right now, just because I think this is a good one to uh, talk about. 
SDGR. I love the the the, the potential uh, cup and handle. It's a pretty new issue, but then you got a beautiful cup and handle possibly right here in the making. And what I want to talk about today is I, I like I said, uh, I I made an error last week only because there was a new feature added to uh, the uh, Brokerage Plus module and and I want to go over that. So what the what the, these buttons right here, this blue B button and red S button right here. Let me go ahead and get my marker so you guys can see where I'm talking about right there and right there. Okay, these are buttons that you can use to trade with from the chart using pre configured parameters. In other words, you can set up targets, you can set up what I love, stops, okay? And and then you can set a price alert that will automatically trade for you. And I mentioned last week, I think more people would really, if they learn to take the motion out of it and just set up, you know, levels where they want to buy a stock or short a stock, whatever they're doing, and set them and forget them. And, and some of the my best trades have come by doing that. And uh, but what happened last week is I'll show you right here. So what you have to do, you have to have a strategy. This is called my chart long strategy. And if I right click on it, okay, you're going to see that I have it checked as my default chart long strategy. So anytime I set my buy button on it, it's defaulting to this strategy and the parameters that I have set in it. Now, I don't have time today to go back through all the parameters because I really want to go in and talk about this, uh, the new uh, channel four. But if I go into edit trading strategy, where I messed up last week is if you go to risk management, you're going to see there's a little box here. Okay. And it's defaulted to automatic check. In other words, use last price as reference for placing exit stops. So if I have a 3% stop in here and I'm buy, I'm, I want to buy the stock higher, okay, if I have that box checked, it's going to calculate my 3% from where the last price was. I don't want it to do that. I want it to price my stock from where the, my stop from where I set my alert, okay, for where I enter the trade. So if that's the case, I, I, I really don't know why you'd want to set it at the current price. I wouldn't want to set it, you know, where I put my alert. Because I'm using a three percent, looking to make probably you know eight to ten percent, and you know lose three percent. That's a nice uh, risk reward uh, split there. Okay, so just remember you got to uncheck this box. Everything else remains the same. Now, if you watch, uh, let's see, I think that was already set for that. So now, if I go in here and I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying. You know, look, we've got a nice little double top right here and right here. If I think it gets to this, this area right here, there's a good chance it's going to go at least, you know, another couple of bucks. And there's a really good chance it's going to go test this high over here, which is another six points away. So all I got to do is click on the buy button, right? Set the point. I want to buy the stock if it hits that area. Okay. Click. And now it set my buy and it set my stop automatically now it's kind of hard to tell on the daily so let's go over here and look at it on the intraday you can see now it's working correctly i have a entry to buy it at 51.46 right my stop's going to be right here at 49.92 i can just calculate that quickly in my head that is about a three percent stop about a buck uh 80 or something like that i can't get the exact number now let's say you're doing this and you and you're all of a sudden like well gosh it has great support right here i'm going to give myself a little bit of room so you can always drag this after you've done it and move it say i want to stop below this line right here this so and all this is calculated for you so now you don't have to do anything all right you sit back and, and you're going to be able to do this with paper trading okay when you guys are taking the test drive you're going to be able to play around with this and you watch, if you just set some of these features up, uh, and some of the better ones when you buy pullbacks in stocks, those can be, you know, look for pullbacks. Uh, you may, let's see, say for example, you're like, cancel this order. I got a better, this thing is kind of volatile. If it comes down here and catches, you know, touches this fast line, this 10 period moving average, that's where I want to buy it. So you come in here, do your buy set it right there at the 10 period moving average bingo and now it's set the buy 
and this you can see the sale over here. So you can work in either direction. Okay, you can buy once you know do it for breakouts or you can do it on pullbacks. All right, that's enough of that. I wanted to show you just remember to uncheck that box if you want to calculate your stop from where you entered. Now let me go ahead and delete these so I don't mess up my system here. All right, now guys, this is exciting. I rebuilt with the help of a few of the guys sharing some of their alerts with me, Channel 4. It's called Channel 4 right now. This is going to change to Trader's Vault because Channel 4 really doesn't convey what its purpose is, okay? Trader's Vault is going to be a better idea. This is the TI Traders, and it's their vault of really, really good uh, alerts and scans that you have access to immediately. So I'm going to talk about some today. And we're going to go over and take a look at them, break them down, what they do. All right. And, and Brad, our CTO, added some nice charts in here for me as well. So now you can sit here and just, you know, play around and look at charts on it as well. All right. Let me let me add, let me quickly, I'm going to circle the ones I've added, okay, and talk about them a little bit. And like I said, you might want to, if you can't remember them, you might want to jot these down. Okay. Composite rating. The A table has been added. Earnings watcher. A lot of them. Uh, jam down by. Random acts of violence. <laughs> a good one. Don't worry, I'll talk about this. Extreme master blaster. A great momentum trading one. Very much like Extreme Volume High Low Pro, that's one of my favorite that's been in there for a uh, a while. Bull Flag Intraday. Uh, pretty much kept. Jamie has some good ones in here. All his turbo uh, ups and downs. I did not replace any of those. Those are pretty popular. Bounce below 50 SMA. You might want to make a little notation. This is a short strategy. That's been the same. Revenue growth fishing. I have found some really, really good trades off this lately. We'll take a look at some of the setups in there right now. Uh, bull flag daily setup. Wasn't anything in there today at the close, but keep an eye on that. They'll show you some really good uh, um, uh, bull flag setups. So the, no, and rounded bottom, there's another one. So a lot of new windows in here, guys. So if you're a long time Trade Ideas user, you want to venture back into channel four. There's a lot of new good stuff in there. Take a look at these if you're coming in the test drive, okay? I'm telling you, these are some of the best ones that we use here at uh, you know, traders at Trade Ideas. And I'm gonna uh, briefly uh, break down some of these. And let me just get rid of these markings first and let's just stop and go left to right composite rating all right uh i created uh the formula with the help with michael's input writing up all these formulas for me for a composite rating uh and you can see it in a single stock window or you can see it in any filter you can use it it's a composite rating basically what basically what it looks at is about uh about 12 technical indicators and about four or five fundamental indicators all right and then it rates the stock based upon its technical analysis and its fundamental analysis and it gives it a score okay 100 being the highest score uh, and you can see the score right here it's sorted by score let me drag this down a little bit and this is just a way to find stocks that are exhibiting very strong technical uh, and fundamental, uh, mostly technical. I will say that mostly of it is technical, but they have to have some, you know, fundamental to, especially to get these 98, 99 scores. You got to have some uh, low debt. You got to have some, uh, oh, let's see, revenue growth. Uh, I'm trying to think some other things I threw in there. Uh, uh, earnings. And anyway, there's there's a, there's plenty of both fundamental and technical, but anyway, this is a great way to find stocks that are strong, that are strong on the chart. Let me just make it a little bit bigger daily chart here, so you guys can kind of see that. We want to focus on the daily here. That's where it's going to show most of. There's Nvidia, you know, close to a 52-week high. 
looking at this level right here. But I got to I got to pick up and go through this pretty quick. So this is uh, the composite rating, showing scores with uh, stocks with the highest composite rating. The A table. Okay, Steve took the composite rating that I did, and he created one. Okay, called the A table. That stocks that have a good, not great. They don't have to be 99 or 100. But look at the short float. He put short float in there. He added a short float. Uh, uh, column so you guys can see these stocks are not only uh, strong they have a very high short interest a lot of time that just adds fuel to the fire when these things get going because the shorts have to they get scared and they have to cover so not only do you have buy-in come in you have shorts covering so it can really add some you know spunk to that price action all right Earnings Watcher, I showed this the other day. Okay, this is simple, a very little easy top list where you can just keep an eye on stocks that had earnings either last night or this morning. That's why they're all either negative 0.25 or a positive 0.25. Negative 0.25 means they had earnings last night. Positive 0.25 means they had earnings this morning. If you're ever confused about this scale, this, uh, decimalization that we use think of it like this zero is midnight okay the night before okay think of a linear scale like a and, and zero is midnight anything to the left starts at negative two five and counts backwards and that means it's in history anything to the right is positive starting at 0.25 and it's either this morning or in the future Anyway, it takes get a little bit getting used to, but that's just a great way to keep an eye on stocks that had earnings. You can kind of watch those and sort them by what you want, uh, relative volume or change for the close. Jam down buy. Okay, this is Steve took uh, one that I created called I'll take back or I'll take that. And he kind of added his own little uh, flair to it. Uh, basically, if we look at the configuration, okay, what this is looking for. And these can be some great pickups. This is like actually a long, and I'll update our uh, Channel 4 document uh, document by uh, the test drive. So I'll have all these with a little brief description on them. But this this is looking for stocks that here's the key here. They're coming down and they're touching or really close to touching their 10 period moving average. But okay, the change in 20 days they have to be up 10 percent over the last 20 days. Okay, but look here change from the close, they have to be down 1%, okay? So they are basically selling off right into their 10 period moving average, okay? It's probably a momentum stock if it's up 20% or 10% in the last 20 days, but now it's coming down and touching its momentum line, what we call the momentum line, the 10 period moving average. And you can, Steve Steve covered this in his webinars too, so uh, uh, I know because a lot of people has been asking for it. So that's a good one. Okay, that's a contrarian buy. The stock's hitting a lows, but you're looking to pick it up on the weakness. And I'm screwing up here because I'm, let me move this back up. There we go. Random acts of violence, same principle. Okay, stocks that are hitting low, but let's see what's happening in here. <laughs> this is, you can pick up some good ones in this one too. It's a contrarian play. You're looking to go long. Okay. Let me give me a drink of water. The change from the close has to be down two and a half percent. But also the stock composite rating has to be 70 or higher. So that's a pretty decent score. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. It's not like you have to be above 90 to be strong. You can actually have a composite rating of 70 and uh, it can be it can be really strong. Uh, relative volume. I don't want stocks that are doing huge relative volume and selling off. So I have a, a a max here of two. That's still pretty high, but it's not getting slammed on earnings probably. Okay. And uh, this is just a way to factor out st stocks that had earnings. So basically, it's very similar to jam down, uh, but it's looking for stocks that are. Uh, change from the close they're selling off more they have to be down two and a half percent so that one is a 
a good one. If you're a contrarian play, you're looking for stocks to possibly reverse. Extreme Master Blaster, what this is, it's a basically a multi-strategy window with different strategies. There's looking for stocks that are doing huge volume to the upside. You can see my different ones. They have to be over between two and ten dollars. Pretty straightforward. Over ten dollars. They got some low float ones in here. Okay. You need they have to be doing under, they have to have a float of under 20 million. All right. Also got extreme volume 52 week high and extreme volume all time high. So a lot of these were coming through there today. A lot of good ones. So that is one of the momentum traders' favorite uh, alerts right there. If you're coming into the test drive, your momentum trader, you probably want to have that up. Bull flag intraday. Uh, I had to get creative on this, but it works pretty good. All right, let me see if I can uh, pull up a 15-minute chart here and show you a bull flag intraday. Uh, well, only one RBA. And there you see it. It had a nice up move. It has to have a, a percent, at least like a 1% move higher and then going sideways, you know, showing that uh, potential, you know, bull flag pattern there. So um, uh, this is, if you're looking for stocks, you know, doing that, uh, uh, this, this it's a nice alert. Now you won't get a ton of it on this. See, they have to be performing or setting up a nice little bull flag for you. All right. Sorry, I'm having to go through this pretty quick, guys, but there's a lot of them to go through. Uh, bouncers the same. Turbo Brank, those are all Jamie's, which are very good. Uh, if you're looking for stocks that are just kind of breaking a range and, and going up or down, that's uh, a good section there. Uh, these, nothing is changing these. This bounce below 50 SMA, okay? What it is, it's basically a flip of this one right here, this pullback above 50 SMA. So basically what it's looking for are stocks. If you like short selling, it's looking for stocks that are, this looks like it's been uh, optimized. Uh, but here's the key, the change from the 50 day SMA, it has to be below its 50 day SMA. So basically it's had a bounce and it's below its 50-day moving average, but it's starting to show signs of weakness. That's why it's hitting a new low. So if you like short selling, pay attention to this, okay, because the pattern, you can see USO is in this one. I and mean, we all know that USO has been kind of struggling lately. And uh, I'm not sure when this came out, but that's one of the last ones, but you can find some good ones in this. Okay, now, I. These ones on the bottom, a lot of people come in here and ask, you know, what which ones do you have for uh, potentially swing trading? What I've done is I put those all on the bottom. Now, let me make something perfectly clear, okay? Any alert window can be used for swing trading. All swing trading is is just a subjective frame of amount of time you're going to hold the stock. So some of my best swing trades come from momentum trade, this extreme volume, high, low, pro, extreme master blaster, because some of your best starts of a move start with big, huge volume on the first day. And then they have two or three, four, five days after that, that, that they still move higher. So don't think that just because it's a momentum trader that it cannot be a good swing trader. Those could be some of the best ones. But I did also added some other ones down here, this Let's Go Fishing, it's been in there for a while. Revenue Growth Fishing, I have been founding some sweet ones in here. I'll look at some of this CLDX, just show the, now, look at this pattern right here. I thought it was gonna go today, all right? The key is, is the revenue growth. Look at this revenue, it has to have revenue growth above, I think 20%, which is good. Uh, CLDX has revenue, quarterly revenue growth of, of almost 45%. One to keep an eye on. I have been finding some really good ones in this one. JKS is actually setting up pretty good, uh, potentially. If it can break out of this kind of wedge it's developing here. But anyway, th this one is a good one. It's looking for stocks that have been kind of, they're trading in the lower end of their three month range, but they have great revenue. Uh, they still may not be making money, so you kind of want to keep an eye on the single stock window to see that they don't have a lot of debt and, you know, and everything's setting up technical, technically. But anyway, I found some gems out of that one. 
Uh, this is once. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the bull flag daily setup. It's the same principle as is intraday, but it's looking for stocks that are setting up a bull flag on the daily. Now, there wasn't anything coming through there today. That's like I said, you're not going to see a ton of stuff in this because they have to basically be setting up, you know, that bull flag is hard to find. Okay. But keep an eye on that. You will see it populate at times. Rounded bottom. This is a one that Michael shared with me. You guys can take a look at that if you. Take a look at some of them in here. I thought uh, NTAP was in here early. I'm not sure what happened to that one. But it's kind of similar to, uh, you know, the one I just showed you. It's looking for stocks that have kind of a rounded uh, bottom that Michael has put together. This could be, obviously, it's a daily chart, this rounding bottom. So it's more of a swing trade, not looking for uh, any momentum. Not to mean, that doesn't mean it can't have it, but nonetheless potential rounding bottom so i don't know a whole lot about this but mike just shared it with me today but you guys can definitely take a look at the configuration in that uh so that was all the new ones i do want to point out this bullish daily candlestick pattern okay because i think a lot of people are missing uh, a very good alert and this was in, this was already in our old one so what this is looking for if I go into strategy, you're going to see there's four candlestick patterns, all right? But if you look, let's go into uh, the bottoming tail configuration here. And you can find this in any configuration if you go there, guys. You can put these things. If I go to symbol list and I click on add existing list, you are going to see something called daily right there. What you need to do is expand it. It will show you all these daily patterns. So what our servers do after each close and well into the next morning, it goes out and finds all these daily patterns for you, all right? And these can be very powerful for swing trading. Uh, and what I've done is I created a uh, an alert, which is a new high. And my filters, if you look here, it's looking for stocks over $5. The relative volume has to be at least one. Position in previous day's range is is beautiful right here okay nine minimum that means the stock is taking out yesterday's high okay uh the volume in the five minute this is just average volume i don't want to see things doing it with an anemic volume it could be a you know a trap uh, or just might not have enough volume to follow through but anyway you can uh you can play around with this and i'm telling you there's some really good let me see if i can find something that's actually working there's a beautiful one right there okay Look at the zoom in on this. Look at this right here. Stock that recently hitting a multi-month high. Look at this pullback. You bottoming tail yesterday, and you you would have been notified right when it took out yesterday's highs. So pay attention to this, guys. I don't have time uh, to look at all. We have time to look maybe at a few more. And Jamie, I hope you're not getting swamped over there. We're all good over here, Andy. Cats. Okay. Here's another one. Look at this cat's nice pullback. Look at that bottoming tail yesterday and then nice green bar today. Look at that right there. Another one, just one after another. Uh, so pay, pay attention to this. I, I really believe more people should, should watch this. Yeah, even if you, even if you're a momentum trader, look at the momentum you'd have had on that stock right there. These can be a, a, a beautiful, uh, uh, and I, I will say this, Bottoming tail and green bar reversals work the best. Okay, you're not going to see too many dojis because take a look at this BL. They have to be a perfect doji, just like that. The close has to be exactly as the and the same thing with the hammer. You're not going to see a whole lot of hammer. But let's take a look. Oh, that was a that was a gap and go right there. Obviously earnings or something. But anyway, guys. This, you have access to all of this, okay? All you got to do is go to Channel 4. Once again, it'll soon be named uh, Trader's Vault. And once again, you come in here, even for the test drive, you have access to our favorite alerts here at Trade Ideas. So take advantage of it. It's uh, it, can, it can really be beneficial to you. <clears throat> all right, Jamie, do I need a hit on anything over there? Or are we all good? I think we are all good. Uh, Mark just slid in that comment right. about how do you calculate slippage? Well, 
that's kind of a hard uh, thing to to address. You can just build in approximated slippage, right? You, need, you can even do that with our back tester. <clears throat> um, anything to add on top of that, Andy? No, no. Yeah, you're right. You you can you can add it, uh, calculate it. Uh, the best thing to do uh, is if you're back testing your own strategies. Uh, there's a uh, don't have time to get into it because we've got to wrap it up here. But uh, there's a place in there where you can uh, add some uh, slippage in there. It's not called slippage, but uh, you can you can find it in the back tester. All right. Let's see. It looks like we are all good. Let's see. Yes, Michael, you do. You After the close tomorrow, hang tight. You may take about an hour, but you'll get an email, okay? And then uh, it will let you know that you're ready to go. You're ready to sign in and take it and, and play around with it all weekend. Uh, you will have data over the weekend. Obviously, it's not going to be live data, but you'll have, you'll have access to our servers and all the data. So uh, you can go in history and look at some alerts and things like that. So spend some time with it. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Great, uh, great attendance today. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we set an all-time record, so love seeing that. And I'm going to bring Scott in. You guys hang on. If you're not signed up for the webinar, uh, he'll tell you how to do it. Great. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, mm -hmm. Test Drive, as mentioned, starts next week on Monday, but you can get access after the market closes tomorrow on Friday. Sign up now. Uh, it's under it's under nine bucks, two weeks. If you sign up right away, you get the full two weeks. Trade-ideas.com slash test drive is the place to go to get all the additional information and the sign up link. So we'll see a bunch of you next week during the test drive. Stay tuned for that. You get an email when it launches. Uh, we've got daily support sessions and we're also running these during the test drive. So tune into that. Uh, Trade-ideas.com slash live will take you to the YouTube page to bookmark. So uh, all week next week and the following week, tune in to those daily support sessions and Barry's trading room if you want some extra assistance during the test drive. Uh, we have a new ebook out, our back testing module, among some other technology. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash earnings for that ebook. It's free. It's got some cloud links to upload um, layouts or scans from mentioned during the uh, in the ebook into your layout. So uh, don't miss that. Trade Ideas Podcast. We have a new episode coming out tomorrow. Be ready for that. It's going to be all about the test drive. Search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts and add us as a subscription. Check out some of the previous interviews that we've released this year and stay tuned for that new one that comes out tomorrow. I'll help prep you for the test drive next week. Spring Holly is the springtime code for this webinar. Use it. It's all caps. Saves 15% off your first month or year of Trade Ideas if you decide you want to do an upgrade or start a new subscription today. Uh, there's also that test drive, as previously mentioned, that starts on Monday. So that's another great way to try out premium. Uh, you can follow Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. Our Steve Gomez is at Today Trader, also at Trade Ideas. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to follow. And info at trade-ideas.com is the best place to send all your questions because that goes into our help desk software and gets routed to the appropriate team member. Uh, we're going to have the recording of this up later on tonight or tomorrow, and you get an email reminder tomorrow with a link on how to find it on the playlist. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Uh, yeah, uh, John, yes. Uh, I saw your question there. We do not have any sharp ratios on, on the AI. If you mm -hmm. want to send something to info at trade-ideas.com, uh, we do have a graph comparing it to the S&P 500 that we can send you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, hey, look forward to the uh, test drive. Have a great weekend.